Margie. Well, it's about time you showed up. What took you so long? Oh, I had a little business with the government. Okay, so I had to stop by the unemployment office and pick up my check. Your last one, Freddy. I've got it all figured out. You'll never have to go there again. But, Margie... We've got to rehearse it before Dad gets home. Rehearse? What are you talking about? Here, I've got it all written out for you. Now, read it as though you meant it. Mr. Albright, I want a job in your office, and this time I won't take no for an answer. You mean... The minute he comes through that door. But first, we'll run through it a couple of times. Now, I'll pretend I'm Dad just getting home from the office. You ready? Ready. I want a job in your office, and this time I won't take no... Margie, I can't do it. He'll kill me right on the spot. Sometimes I think my father's right. You just don't have any get up and go. Heck, I haven't. Every time your father walks in, I get up and go. <laughs> okay, now let's try it again. And this time, put some life into it. Shove me down in the chair. Raise your voice. Any questions? Just one. What? Can't we forget it? All right, Mr. Albright, go on out and come in again. You ready? Ready. What? You here again? I want a job in your office, and I won't take no for an answer. Wilson, I warn you. I said shut up. Wonderful, Freddie, wonderful. Gee, I guess I can be forceful. You'll really be impressed. I'll even lay it on heavier than that. Looks like you got something to happen on your mind, Mr. Albright. Charlie, I've been through the mill today. Contracts, contracts. A big deal with a company called Consolidated Mica. What a bunch of chiselers. Why, they beat me right down to the last penny. I'm so mad right now that I could punch a hole through a two-foot plank. Nobody better get in my way, that's all I can say. <laughs> Ready. What? You here again? Shut up. Sit down. I want a job in your office. I said sit down. No, no please, Mr. Albright, please, no, Mr. Albright, help. Help! No, my apartment, help! Yes, no! no. Stop me. This is it. This is the payoff. I knew it had to come sooner or later. Ah! Oh, honey, I'm sorry I blew the roof in, but I've had a terrible day. But even on a good day, I think I could do that goon in. You're just against him. Oh, forget about Freddy. I'll tell you what. Early Sunday morning, we'll drive over to Jersey. And you remember that place on the Palisades where we used to picnic, Satan's Cliff? I want to talk about Freddy, not about Satan's Cliff. Oh, Margie, honey, give him up. He'll never amount to anything. He completely lacks the essential ingredient. What's that? Gumption, that's what. Look what just happened now. If he'd have stood his ground, would I have been able to say, as I can now, he's a coward? No. If he'd stood his ground, I'd have had to say, that boy has gumption. You mean you wouldn't have hit him? Of course I'd have hit him. Right square in the mush. But I'd have to admit that boy had gumption. Gumption. So all I have to figure out is how to give Freddy the gumption he needs. I read a book the other day. It was about a man and a woman. Oh? Well, what about them? In the first ten pages, they kissed twenty times. What's that got to do with gumption? Nothing. But I just can't get it off my mind. I put it on my library shelf under M for mule. I got such a kick out of it. Please, Mrs. Odette, think about Freddy. Oh, well... Now, what was that old story? Oh, yes, about a man who was a coward. And one day, a friend gave him a vest and told him it was bulletproof. Again, I ask, what's that got to do with gumption? The vest wasn't bulletproof, but the man felt secure and shot it out with a whole bunch of gangsters. In other words, what Freddy needs is a certain feeling of security. Yeah, if Freddy felt secure, he wouldn't be afraid to... Hold the phone. Got an idea? Boy.
boy will this give him gumption. A couple of years ago, Freddy's aunt left him a hundred acres of desert land in Arizona. Now, suppose something valuable were discovered on it. How could it? That land is so worthless, the jackrabbits only stay there because of the jill rabbits. I'll need a box of earth and some phony stationery. I'll get it printed up first thing in the morning. And by tomorrow afternoon, Freddie Wilson will be the gumptionest boy you've ever seen. I'll see you later. A box of earth. I guess my poor old 82-year-old mind can't figure things out too well. Oh, to be young and only 80 again. <laughs> I've never heard you so excited on the phone before. What's up? This tells the story, but first I want you to see something. It came in the mail this morning. This is yours. Oh, Margie, you shouldn't have done it. Just what I've always wanted, a box of dirt. <laughs> is this what you told me about? Remember when your aunt left you that property in Arizona, and I told you you ought to find out if it was worth anything? No, I don't remember that. Oh, don't you remember anything? Well, about a week ago, I decided to find out for you. That earth is from your land, and this is from an assayer I paid to check it for you. Read it. This is about my land? Dear Mr. Wilson, we would suggest you keep the following extremely confidential until you have expert advice as to proper procedure. We are sending sample of your topsoil. Same covers more than 50 of the 100 acres. This soil contains 47% top grade... You... You... Uranium? Take it easy, Freddy. Don't get excited. Fifty acres of uranium. I'm going to call the unemployment office and tell them what I think of them. <laughs> no, Freddie, you've got to calm down and act sensibly. Yoo-hoo, Margie. Come on in, Mrs. O'Dad. Margie, do you realize what this means? I'm a trillionaire. I think I'll buy New York. Oh, I see you've told him the good news. Mrs. Odets, I've always wanted to do something nice for a sweet old lady. Is there anything you like? I'm not sweet and I'm not old. I'm so young, I help Boy Scouts across the street. Oh, he didn't mean anything, Mrs. Odette. I'll bet you could get a job in my father's office now. Your father's office? Who wants to work for a cheap little outfit like that? <laughs> I think I'll buy up all the automobile factories in Detroit and make just one car. The Freddy. Yeah, I think I'll buy my mother that island she's always liked. Uh, Bermuda. Freddy, you've got to calm down. Careful, girl. You're touching an aristocrat. Listen, Freddy Wilson. You wouldn't feel so big if it hadn't been for me, so pipe down and listen. The rich can afford to be understanding. What is it, child? Look, the letter said not to act until you get expert advice. So? And so how much money have you got to get that expert advice? Seven cents. You see, what you need is a job. You've got to have capital. Otherwise, somebody will steal you blind. You'll have to give it away before you have time to develop it. Gee, that's right. And, Freddie, where's a better place to find out how big business operates than my father's office? Or uh, are you still afraid of my father? Afraid of him? That poor guy? Huh. It might be amusing working with him. If I like it, I'll buy out the whole firm. Oh, and Freddie. Yeah? Whatever you do, don't let my father and Mr. Honeywell find out about the uranium. You know how clever they are in getting what they want. Don't you worry about a thing. Oh, almost forgot my uranium. You, uh, you won't let them find out what's in it? Not a chance. See you later. So long, kid. Freddie, if I've ever seen a man with gumption, you're it. Gumption's my middle name. Well, did it work or did it work? He's as good as hired already. But, honey, what happens when the poor boob finds out his box of earth came from the backyard of this building? Oh, he'll get another letter from the assayer saying it was all a mistake. But by then, he'll be a solid employee. And my father will have to admit that I was right about Freddie being able to do a good job. <laughs> Hey, Alma boy. Oh, thanks, Mr. Honeywell. 
I've already told Ed Whitlock that we're all set on this end for the consolidated mica deal. Fine. You've done a good job. You've worked hard. I'll be in my office. What do you want? Get up. What did you say? I said get up. Go find yourself a smaller office. I like this one. Mr. Honeywell, will you open the door so I won't break it when I throw him out? You stay where you are. What? Do you realize I'm the president of this company? Look, Honeywell, I'm... Honeywell? Nobody calls me anything but Mr. Honeywell. I told Margie to give you up. I hope the district attorney understands my contribution to society for what I'm about to do. You don't scare me, Whitey. <laughs> I'm going to work in this office. All right, I've had enough of this, Ninny. You have my full permission. I'll get the door. Oh, you've asked for this for a long time, and now you're going to get it. <laughs> my uranium! My uranium has spilled all over. Uranium? Did he say uranium? My uranium. Here, this will explain. Uranium? <laughs> All right, don't waste your train of it. You wanted a job with us, son? Uh-uh, you don't want me. Oh, now, whatever gave you that impression? You only like me now because I have 50 acres of uranium. Why, Freddie Wilson, how can you accuse Mr. Albright and me of being mercenary? Why, we always liked you, my boy. Always. I've wanted to ask you this question for a long time. Will you come and work with us, please? Gee, you, you really mean it, Mr. Albright? Oh, come into your office, Freddie boy. <laughs> uh, sit down, Freddie lad. And as you said, I'll take a smaller office. And the only thing that's important to Mr. Honeywell and me is that you're happy. Happy and with us. All right, that consolidated deal, we'll need that money. Oh, well, Betty. Yes? Betty, call Ed Whitlock in Philadelphia and tell him to hold off on that consolidated mica deal. Then phone the airlines and get three tickets for the nearest airport to Prescott, Arizona. A deal like this uranium field is just the spot for that $200,000. Could be the biggest deal we've ever gotten in on. Might lead to millions. Hundreds of millions. Oh, Mr. Albright, I just remembered. I guess I kind of slipped up. I hope you won't give me away. Uh, give you away on what, Freddie Milan? It isn't too important, but I wouldn't want Margie to get sore. Margie? What's Margie got to do with this? Well, it's nothing, really, but I wouldn't want her to find out about it. You see, she didn't want me to tell you fellas. Understand, George? Vern? Freddy, did Margie have anything to do with this uranium discovery? Did she? Oh, boy, everything. Well, she wrote to the assayer. She got the package in my name. She advised me how to come down here and get this job so I'd have more money to get a better deal. Margie did everything. What do you think? I'm afraid to think at this point. As Margie says, now I've got to go. Gumption? Is that the word she used? That's the very word. Gumption. Uh, I'll tell you what, Freddy. I want you to take your first day with the firm off. Now, here. Here's some money. Go someplace. Have a good time. But don't tell Margie that you told us anything about the uranium, and we won't tell her either. Vern, you've just made yourself a deal. See you tomorrow, George. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, we'll keep that here in the, in the safe. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. See you later, fellas. Uh, so long, Freddy. I could tell you had an idea. What is it? Well, if Margie's involved, we can't take a chance. Uh, 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 Betty, look up a metallurgical laboratory. Metallurgical, that's right. And tell them we want a man over here as soon as possible with a Geiger counter. Yes, yes, a Geiger counter. Nothing? Isn't radioactive at all? Sorry, gentlemen. Say, where did you ever get the idea that this stuff was hot? Well, we read a report from an assayer in Arizona. Yes, Betty? Uh, thanks, Betty. 
Just as I expected. There's no such a Sayers office. It's a pure, unadulterated phony all the way through. All right, you've got to do something about that daughter of yours. All I said was just one word. Gumption. Hello? Uh, put him on. Hello, Ed? You what? Uh, oh, oh, no, Ed. Put the money back in Consolidated Mica. Uh, is there still time? Oh, wonderful. Do it right away. I'll explain later. But get that Consolidated Mica deal. We could have shot $200,000 away and all on account of Margie. Oh, well, what am I going to do with that girl? Wait. Could you rig up one of these Geiger counters so that it would click any time you wanted to? Why, oh, yes, I suppose so, but... What's on your mind, Albright? Tonight, Mr. Honeywell, my little Margie is going to learn the lesson of her life. Dad? It sure is. You sure sound happy. Why shouldn't I be? I'm flying to Arizona the first thing tomorrow morning. Arizona? Arizona, big deal. And you'll never guess who our newest employee is, Freddie Wilson. He didn't mean to tell us, but he, he dropped his box of ore and, well, I, I can't tell you any more about it. I promised I wouldn't. Dad, you're flying to Arizona because of that? I'm not only flying to Arizona, but we pulled $200,000 out of a surefire deal to put in this thing that, that Freddie's concerned with. $200,000! <laughs> Dad, I've got to tell you something. That earth isn't from Arizona. It's local dirt. I dug it myself from the backyard of this building. You what? Well, I was only trying to give Freddie some gumption. <sighs> Margie, all right. I haven't spanked you since you were a little girl. Oh, what, a, what am I sore about? You mean you aren't mad? Oh, why should I be? But, Dad, that dirt, the report, I made it all up. It isn't radioactive at all. Margie Albright, do you think that two businessmen, as smart as Mr. Honeywell and your old pappy, wouldn't check before leaping into a deal as big as this? Who we called in the metallurgist, and his Geiger counter told us all we wanted to know. You mean the dirt in that box is... One of the richest strikes of uranium he'd ever heard of. Holy mackerel! Mr. Honeywell will be here any minute now with the, with the man from Washington. The man from Washington? When you deal in anything as vital as uranium, you have to check with the government on anything connected with it. Why, when we called Washington and told them how high the count was, they dispatched a special plane with a government expert. We're rich! So, Pappy, little Margie always gets you in trouble with her ideas, huh? I'll have to admit it. You really did something wonderful this time. <sighs> Sure you got everything straight? I think so. My little Geiger Carter is about to play the keg of the year on Mr. Albright's daughter. I guess you know what to do. Don't you worry, Mr. Honeywell. I'll make it look good. Uh, come in. It's probably Mr. Honeywell, the man from Washington. Oh, wait, Dad. Naturally, I'll expect to be president of the company, but you and Mr. Honeywell can be vice president. Okay, baby. Hi, Vern. Hi, Margie. This is Professor Wesser from Washington. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Hi, Professor. I'm Mr. Albright's daughter. I made the discovery. Well, if what Mr. Honeywell tells me is true, you're to be congratulated. Say, that must be hot ore. My counter is clicking already. Where is it? It isn't here. It's in our safe at the office. Well, if it isn't here, what's my counter picking up? It's coming from you. Why would it come from me? Good heavens. What's the matter? Something wrong? Stand back from there. Well, what's wrong with me? Did you say you made the discovery? I dug it up with my hands. You shouldn't have done that. You've got uranium poisoning. The uranium poisoning? Well, what does that mean? That means that you'll have to be taken to the government experimental hospital in Washington. They'll put you in a lead-walled room to protect others. Until... Until what? Until the end. <gasps> My baby. My poor baby. That means you'll never be able to touch her again. Oh, Dad. Dad. I'll get it. I had so little time to talk with my friend. Hello? Margie, I've been sitting here trying to figure out what kind of a gag was Mr. Honeywell and that other man talking about playing on you a few minutes ago. You must have the wrong number. 
Oh, I see. You weren't under the gag, but you are now. <laughs> oh. Oh, my baby, my poor baby. Don't touch her. I'll call Washington and arrange everything. I'll go and say goodbye to Mrs. O'Dad. <laughs> You did a wonderful job. Thank you. You'll run along and I'll show off right and I can really light into her when she comes back. <laughs> What's that? It's a note. Dear Dad, I just couldn't face it this way. I'm going to Satan's Cliff and end it quickly. This is my final goodbye. Satan's Cliff? Poor little Margie. What have we done? We've got to stop her. <laughs> And now, a little bowler for them. What you going to do? Hello? Uh, get me the New Jersey State Police. Police? The man in the book was a policeman. Crazy copper. <laughs> Hello? If you'll go to Satan's Cliff, you'll find three lunatics there looking for an imaginary girl they're trying to convince isn't radioactive. That's what I said. Well, I said they were lunatics. <laughs> I think the girl on the phone was the lunatic. Margie! Yeah. Margie! Miss Albright, you're not radioactive. The girl wasn't wrong. We better get him. Now, wait a second. The poor guys aren't to blame. Let me handle this. In a case like this, a little psychology helps a lot. Now, come on. She only knew she isn't radioactive. Poor Margie. Poor little thing. Uh, yeah. Fellas. Oh, thank goodness, the police. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe you can stop her. The radioactive girl. Yes, only she isn't radioactive. We just made her think she was. Look, fellas, you don't have to worry any longer. The girl's safe. We just picked her up. You did? Yep. She's locked up all safe and sound. Now you come along with us and we'll take you to her. Oh, thanks a lot. Come on, fellas. We'll follow the policeman in my car. Oh, be our guest. We'll take you in our car. But we have Mr. Albright's car with us. Oh, don't worry about that. First thing tomorrow morning, we'll send a little pixies after it. Pixies? <laughs> come on, fellas. It's time to go Betty Bye. Uh, now, just a <laughs> Take your hands off of me. Do you know who I am? Sure. You're Napoleon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come to the car and meet Josephine. Oh, this is right. <laughs> very funny, very funny indeed. Well, they only kept you overnight. Now, you listen to me, young lady. If you ever, if you ever do a thing like that again, Margie Albright. <laughs> Morning, Margie, my girl. I told my tailor about my good luck, and he gave it to me on 100% credit. Tell a kid here about our little merger, Vern? Get out of here! But Vern! Get out! But Vern, you, me, George, my uranium! Go, Freddy, go on! Practically the richest man in the world, and he still throws me out. This place confuses me, it really does. <laughs> I guess you're still mad, huh? Mr. Honeywell, too? Good. Maybe this time you learn not to play tricks on little Margie. You styled it. You sold that bubble brain, Freddy, a crazy bill of goods and... Okay, I guess we did ask for it. <laughs> well, that's my little Margie for you. <laughs>